Hello, everyone. It is uh, right at 4.20. Uh, and yes, that time was done by design. Uh, and so, you know, you just have to think about what that means. And if you have to question it, then I'm probably not going to explain it. But um, I, this is the first of, of what I hope turn into many monthly, uh, you know, chats related to the cannabis industry and cannabis investing. Certainly glad uh, uh, everyone is, is joining. Um, I did want to make this kind of open to everyone. Uh, for which this first one actually is. Um, but my boss has, has told me this is the only one I get. Um, af after this, um, I, I can't, uh, I've got to close it off. I, I, can't, I can't offer it to everyone. So um, basically, just kind of give you a taste of what we're going to do is, uh, you know, I'll talk about a few things, but I, I definitely want to open things up to questions in the live chat. Uh, if you have questions about maybe a particular stock or a sector or anything like that within the cannabis industry, then uh, certainly... Uh, would encourage you to ask that. Um, and, and I'll try to answer it as, as quickly as I can. Uh, please don't pay attention to the thumbnail. I felt like I needed to take that picture about five times because I just, I, I hate how those pictures look. But uh, um, so, so we'll talk about uh, quite a bit of things. But I really, you know, if you have a question, uh, I do want you to ask uh, uh, as, as whenever you see fit, just type in the chat box and, and I'll see it and, and, uh, and, and we'll try to get to as many, uh, as we can. I want to try to keep this to around 30 minutes, not, not much more than that. I don't, I, I mean, unless the conversation just, uh, rolls and, and rolls, then we'll, we'll, we'll keep going. But, uh, um, but again, like I said, uh, we're going to open this up one up to everyone, anyone who is a, a subscriber on our YouTube channel. Uh, this will be open for, uh, for this first one. And then, uh, moving on in August and so on, uh, it's going to be uh, open to just those who are members of our of our membership community, which you can find out more info on that by clicking the join button on our YouTube page. And it was all my boss's doing; I had nothing to do with it. Uh, he he, uh, he he's an ogre and he likes money, so I, I didn't really have much of a choice in it. Uh, I'm not going to name any names or anything like that. But uh, he said, "Okay, you get one, and and you know, so make it count." So that's what we're going to do. So um, first off, uh, in in terms of of the broader cannabis industry. And if I'm looking off to the sides, cause I have another screen over here that I have other things on. So I want to make sure that I can, can kind of bounce back and forth, but, um, you know, cannabis stocks, uh, you know, had suffered a pretty down week, uh, last week, but they have started this week relatively, uh, on an up note, not a strong up note, but, but, uh, you know, moving in upward in, in an upward direction. Um, you know, the, the one thing that we're waiting on here is this is earnings season. We've kicked off earnings season, uh, for, for the, for the previous quarter. Uh, most cannabis companies are, are going to report their earnings coming up uh, the first part of August, so in about a week or so. Uh, we'll see a lot of the bigger operators uh, report, and then they'll move down into smaller operators. So, um, again, I, I think we're going to just kind of see uh, a small tapering in terms of, 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 of cannabis earnings, things like that. I'm, I'm optimistic. I, I really think that, uh, you know, the cannabis companies uh, in the U.S. and in Canada um, are, are, are going to do well in terms of their quarterly earnings. Um, you know, they had a nice boost with, with the coronavirus, uh, being considered, they were considered a, a kind of a necessity and a necessary entity. So, uh, that helped, uh, a lot of them did pivot to delivery, uh, which I think really helped them. And I'm going to touch on that in a little bit because I, I've had a lot of questions about one of the stocks in particular on our, on our uh, cannabis watch list. Uh, and, and, you know, it's been down and, and, and down, you know, pretty, pretty mightily, uh, of late. So, uh, I'll, I'll get to that. Uh, in, in just a bit. But um, so so in terms of, of the broader market, again, I think we're just going to wait on earnings. We're not going to see any large breakouts um, this week anyway. Um, perhaps in another two weeks, probably middle of August, we may see some uh, some strong movement in the cannabis sector. Um, but right now it's going to be uh, kind of on hold just, uh, just, just because, again, it, you know, we don't have anything in terms of federal legalization. Uh, I'm going to touch on that as well. Uh, I, I'm going to get into more legalization uh, in, in my upcoming marijuana market update that comes out later this week. But uh, um, as, as most people who follow the industry know, um, in the in the U.S. Senate, uh, the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, who's a Democrat from New York, uh, worked with uh, uh, Senator Cory Booker of New Jersey and senator from Oregon, I believe, and I can't remember the name, uh, to to craft kind of draft legislation uh, to to move uh, legalization off of uh, move cannabis off of uh, the the schedule the scheduled substances list. So you know, I, the, you would think that'd be a shot in the arm uh, for the cannabis industry, but it wasn't. Um, first off, let's put all this in perspective. It was draft legalization, uh, legislation. Nothing has been formally introduced. 
Um, nothing has been filed. This is just, we have this idea. We're going to put it on paper and tell us what you think about it. It's very commonplace in Washington to do this, um, to where, you know, before you actually put pen to paper to draft a bill and file it with the clerk of the Senate or clerk of the house, uh, you kind of float this possibility and, and just kind of take the temperature of, uh, uh, of things. So, um, and that's what, what's going on right now. So, you know, I, you know, investors look at this and they see it for what it is. It, it, it is, uh, mainly just a way to kind of see where things go, uh, what kind of reaction is there, uh, and, you know, taking the temperature rather, if you will, of, of the House and the Senate to see where things go. And of course, it sparks up a lot of conversation, but it doesn't spark up in t- much in terms of gains. Uh, and real quickly, I'll get to this. Uh, Kristen said, love the Tommy Chong interviews. Uh, how did you get in touch with him? And do you have any other guests planned? Um, let me break that down. And first off, yes, Tommy is quite the character. Uh, there, there's nothing uh, better than getting to talk to Tommy uh, for a little more than an hour, which is what I, I had the uh, the pleasure of doing. Um, how do we get in touch with him? It was kind of happenstance. It, it kind of happened by by chance. Uh, his, his people reached out to us, uh, and we just kind of worked it from there. Do we have uh, any other guests planned? Uh, yeah, we're you know I, we've got a team of, of folks that are working to try to get. Uh, uh, you know, try to get a list of people that are not just involved with cannabis, but more specifically with cannabis investing, uh, cannabis business, um, things like that. Cause I mean, there's, you know, millions of people use cannabis. Um, but I, you know, I want to kind of focus on people that, um, you know, have insight into investing in cannabis, uh, insight into the business in general, uh, for cannabis. That, that's kind of what I'm gearing for. So, um, in answer to your questions, uh, your final question there, Kristen, yes. Um, you know, uh, we do have other guests that we are looking at. Um, and I think, uh, let's see, Marcella asks, when, when will it be law uh, until Ray goes to the moon? Um, when will it be law? You know, I'll tell you, it's going to, it's going to be a while. If you're expecting this to happen in six months or maybe even by the end of 2021, um, I, I don't think that's going to happen. I, I really don't just because we've got such divisiveness in Washington right now. Uh, and there's still a lot of much larger ticket items on the plate of Congress at the moment. Uh, we've got an infrastructure bill that already failed a procedural vote. Um, that's going to take priority over anything else. Um, cannabis is, while it's important to us, uh, you know, as, as uh, people who like to invest and, and, and want to know more about the business, it's important to us, uh, to Washington politicians, it's not. Um, and, and that's just bottom line. That's just, I'm being fair and I'm being honest about it. That's just you know, that, that's how they look at things. Um, if you have not figured out now that most people who are elected to go to Washington don't necessarily have your best interests at heart, I apologize for the rude awakening um, because that is by and large how it works. Um, so, you know, Marcella, to, to answer your question, I was assuming you're asking when, uh, you know, cannabis will be legal federally in the U.S. Um, 2022 at the earliest. Um yeah, you know, I and and I think that is a a, a safe bet if it, if it makes it that far. Again, you know, we've we've had talk of it. The House has progressed a little farther than the Senate, but it takes both chambers and the White House to agree. And, and right now, we have a president, President Biden, who does not necessarily support legalization of cannabis. He's all for decriminalizing cannabis, but not necessarily for uh, for legalizing it. And the, that is, there are two can, completely different things going on there. So decriminalizing means it's not necessarily, uh, you know, a harsh sentence if you get caught with it. Uh, legalizing means that businesses can sell. It opens up, smart, you know, uh, multi-state operators to work across state lines uh, and, and things like that. So um, it, it, there are completely different veins that we're talking about here. So it's very important to keep that um, in, in perspective and, and understand that, uh, um, you know, that's kind of how the the Potomac two step in my in my opinion works. Um, so yeah, r- right now, like I said, you would think that talking about legislation would be big. It wasn't. Um, it 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 drew very lukewarm, very tepid reaction um, because you know there's a lot of stuff still on the plate for Congress, and so cannabis is not going to be uh, a front of mind issue uh, right now. I, I just don't think, and that's unfortunate. That is very unfortunate. It's unfortunate for not only people who who, who use it, but also in, in terms of my view, um, those who are looking to invest in it. Because I think cannabis and cannabis businesses, cannabis operators um, are a very viable business. 
but right now they're hamstrung by by law that suggests that they have to um, go through, jump through these enormous amounts of hoops to, to receive funding. Banks won't touch them because it's still considered illegal. Um, and, and it's just, you know, it's a it's very difficult, slippery slope to, to, to get into. Um, Nicole asks, are cannabis stocks limited until legalization passes, or do you think they're going to, uh, going to continue climbing regardless? Um, I, I, I guess in terms of limited, um, no, I mean, it, it's a stock market. They're the only limit is based on investors and what that, what kind of a price they put on, uh, a, a particular, a particular equity. Um, so, so no, they're not limited. However, if you're looking for a meteoric climb, that's not going to happen until legalization occurs. Um, we're not going to see the cannabis market fully explode to its full potential until federal legalization is done or until we see basically all 50 states do it separately, which is uh, probably more likely at this point than seeing Congress try to do it. Um, I think there's a lot of growth potential in, in, in the cannabis market. I think there's a lot of great companies out there that show a lot of promise, that show a lot of potential. Some of them I have on our cannabis watch list. Some of them I've been looking at for quite some time. Um, and, and I think there's, um, uh, I, again, I think there's just a lot of potential out there for, for, for cannabis and for investors. Um, it's just, like I said, if you're looking for meteoric gains, triple digit winners, you know, you know, 10 baggers, however you want to phrase it, then you're really not truly going to find that until, um, until cannabis is legalized. Uh, and, and, and when that happens, and I think you're going to see a, you see massive growth in the market. And I think you're going to see a lot of other companies come to bear uh, and, and jump in the sector. I think you're going to see big tobacco companies like Philip Morris and, and Altria, uh, you know, or Philip Morris um, get into uh, get into more cannabis uh, related products um, because it certainly has a, a l much less of a stigma than tobacco does. Um, and, uh, you know, companies like Philip Morris are just kind of waiting on the sidelines, waiting for it to be legal. And they're going to pump millions and, and millions of dollars into it and start buying up companies. That, that's, that is what I foresee happening. However, um, if you look at the latest legislation crafted in the Senate, there's actually a, a, a not necessarily a prohibition to that, but it really limits how much bigger companies can come in and swoop in and take over smaller companies and get larger market share share, which I think is good because I think, you know, cannabis is, is the, the cannabis market is, is the backbone of the cannabis market are small operators for sure. Small businesses, um, small growers, small suppliers. Um, and, 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 and to try to eliminate those through just massive, uh, you know, massive buyouts, I think is, you know, I think really waters down, uh, the industry. Um, Kristen asks, what do I think, uh, wh what do I think the next state will be to legalize? Um, <laughs> uh, it, it's hard to say there are several States out there that have, um, you know, legislation working through their processes and committees and whatnot, North Carolina being one of them. Uh, North Carolina is a big tobacco state. So it kind of makes sense that North Carolina would be, uh, in, in that vein. Uh, I, I would love to say that it would be, uh, you know, the state I live in, in Florida, but, um, probably not. Um, I think, uh, and I, and I assume Kristen that you're asking, um, legalizing adult use as opposed to just medical use. Um, so I'm, I'm just kind of looking at it from that, from that perspective. So I think North Carolina has a strong possibility of, of, of legalizing at some point. Um, uh, you know, we, we've seen some movement in, in, obviously Connecticut is legalized. Rhode Island is looking to legalize. Um, you know, I think, I think Rhode Island is taking very strong steps to legalize. And I think you see the domino effect of New Jersey voters approving adult use because now all the surrounding states, New York, uh, and, and around there are now being very re reactive and trying to legalize because they don't want to lose the tax revenue. Um, uh, Sheppy 81 asks, can Canadian companies make it without us legalization? Um, well, they made it before. So yes, it's just, you know, how much are they able to grow? And by grow, I don't mean grow product. I mean, you know, how much are they able to grow their business? The, the U.S. market is huge. It is the the largest, next to China, the largest market out there, and, you know, to to you know to sell to. And so, uh, you know, Canada is great, but Canada is um, it's a good market, but it's a tapped out market. You know, it's they 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 have you know limited licensing of which they are approaching uh, capacity at. Um, you know, they they you know, they're very limited in scope. And plus we're not talking about a very big population here in Canada, especially compared to the United States. So, um, you know, can, um, you know, can Canadian companies make it? Sure. I mean, like I said, they made it so far. Um, however, they get a, a, an exponential boost if, if the U S legalizes and 
as more states legalize, Canadian companies step in and, and and take advantage of that. So so in answer to your question, yes, they can they can make it. However, uh, they don't grow necessarily as fast or as far as they potentially could with U.S. legalization, even Mexican legalization, which is still kind of tied up in court, uh, and 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 much broader European Union legalization. So, uh, let's see: is it possible these companies have a boatload of unclaimed cash due to their inability to put it in the bank? Uh, I mean, everything is either direct cash money or an ATM, uh, and that came from MGS. Um, no. Uh, it, it's it's really not because what cannabis companies what the problem they're facing is um, a lot of supply and the cost to make that supply. Um, so it's not cheap to grow. Cannabis is not. I mean, it's not like going in your backyard and and, and planting corn or or, or anything like that. It, there's a lot of specific measures in place to 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 grow cannabis and to grow it well, uh, and especially when you're talking about different strains of cannabis. So um, no, I don't think that these companies have a boatload of cash. I think they have enough cash to help them see through times when it's difficult. And obviously bigger companies are a little bit more, are a little bit better positioned. I mean, look at grow generation, for example, they've got 11 acquisitions, um, you know, as of right now in 2021, I mean, and, but they're not big, they're not huge acquisitions. They're buying uh, small mom and pop greenhouse growers, uh, one or two, one or two at a time. Like they bought, uh, you know, a, a company in Maine that has two, they just bought one in Northern California that has two. So it's not, you know, if, if they had massive amounts of cash on hand, why would they be sitting on it? Um, you know, the intent here is to grow and to expand the business and to, you know, thus turn a profit based on that. And so I don't, I don't really see that. So no, I don't, I don't think they have un, un, unclaimed cash because then you are involving taxes and that's uh, an even different animal to, to deal with, with cannabis companies in the U S and anything else. So no, I, I don't, I don't think so. I, I think they are making enough to get by, but costs are not cheap. Uh, it's not cheap to, to 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 grow cannabis. It's not cheap to store cannabis, and if you have unclaimed uh, property, if you will, or unclaimed crop, um, you know you've got to do something with it, and that's and that's difficult. Um, I've got a few uh, questions here about specific stocks, of which I'm more than happy to get to. It's just going to take me a little bit of time. First off, with sundial growers, uh, let me look that up here. Um, Sundial Growers, trades on the NASDAQ, SNDL. What I like to do first uh, is I like to look at the financials of a company. Uh, Chase asked me about, about Sundial Growers. Um, <clears throat> and what I see here is um, I'll look at total revenue. Um, this is a fairly uh, new company. It didn't really start registering total revenue, annual total revenue to 2019. It did see a dip in 2020, which is a little concerning, but it wasn't a massive dip. What does uh, uh, you know concern me a little bit is that that dip is expected to carry into this year. Um, that's a bit problematic, and then we'll see they're they're projecting a takeoff of around from from 44 million in revenue in 2021 to 71 million in 2022. Um, yeah, I, to to forecast 60 to 70 percent growth like that. Um, I, I've got to see something on paper that justifies it. And usually you can look at past performance, things like that. And it's not there. Um, earnings are quite honestly, not very good at all. Um, just looking at this, I mean, right now it's, it's earnings per share, uh, for the trailing 12 months of March 31st were, was a negative $241. Uh, that's, that's, that's pretty significant. Uh, if I look at the chart, and I apologize, YouTube doesn't really allow me to share my screen here. Or if it does, I haven't figured out how. Um, right now, it's trading at about 81 cents a share. It was up about 2% today. It's been as high as $3, 295 a share back in February, and has dropped um, pretty precipitously. Uh, it did kind of touch a bit of resistance at about $1.29, but it's pared down. Um, you know, my philosophy here, Chase, is, is buy high, sell higher. Um, and right now, just looking at this, I need to see a better trend with Sundial to make it something worth buying into. It's it's trending downward. Um, if I see a, a, a bit of an uptrend, um, you know, moving moving forward, then then there might be something here, especially that since it's dropped and you get it at a discount. Um, but I don't see that. So I don't know where the bottom is, is basically the bottom line there. I don't know if it's going to continue dropping. Uh, a two cent move in a day is not at 81 cents a share is not significant enough for me to say it's good to go. Um, so I, I would wait for this to uptrend a little bit higher. 
uh, you know, because again, still even at, at under a dollar, I think you're still at a solid price point. Um, so that would be my that would be my initial thought on on uh, on Sundial. Um, someone asked me about Hexo, and I'll get to that here in a second. I've touched on Hexo quite a bit. Um, and I think it's kind of the same for Sundial. I don't, I, I just don't see it fundamentally right now. Um, I don't see a confirmed uptrend, at least not a, not one that I'm comfortable with right now, uh, to say that Hexo is good. I, I, they haven't really exploited that partnership with Molson Coors of which is a bit concerning. Um, you know, if you want to make inroads in the U S uh, and not sell flour, then beverage is another great way to do it. And Hexo hasn't really explored that as, as strongly as I'd like. Um, so until I see that and until I, I, I see that with a, a degree of conviction from Hexo, I'm, I'm not there yet. Um, in terms of its stock price, uh, right now it is actually, it has dropped about two cents today. Uh, and it's still moving downward. It had a bit of a bump up the other day, but it's, it's still trending downward. And again, when you look at stocks and you think that, okay, it's trending downward. So that means it's cheap for me, right? Well, that's partially true. But the problem with that is, and the reason why we look at the buy high, sell higher mentality is it because if you see something in the confirmed uptrend, then you see the price is only going to go up. If there's something in the confirmed downtrend like Hexo, we really don't know where the bottom is. It's at 414 now. Um, you know, even after its stock split, it reached as low as 368. So there's nothing to say that it can't go even lower. Thus, if you bought in today at 414, um, you know, and 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 it dropped down to 368 to test to test some some resistance to that bottom price, you know, you're looking at a loss. But if it's confirmed upward, then you at least can be looking at some some partial gain uh, to 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 work with. So again, uh, you get that, well, buy on the dip. Well, buy on the dip is fine once you realize where the bottom of the dip is. If you don't know where the bottom of the dip is, it's kind of hard to buy on the dip. You know, the, the key here is to make money. And if something is in a confirmed uptrend, especially coming out of a downtrend, then you, you, you're still, uh, you have a very strong possibility of making gains, um, you know, instead of trying to play guesswork and figure out, you know, where something might hit a bottom at. So that that's a really quick thought on Hexo. Um, you know, I, I'm more than happy to do maybe a little more in-depth analysis on that. Uh, and again, thank you for everyone who's joining. We've, we've got a, a good base so far, and I, I really appreciate everyone who's jumping on and and uh, and showing support. I, I appreciate that. Again, uh, my boss said I get this one to send out to everyone for free, so that's that's and I appreciate that. But after this, you, you have to be a member of our community uh, to to join in. And if you're not, then just hit the the join button at the bottom. And uh, you can find out more about uh, what, what that means. Um, Nate asked me my thoughts on Planet 13. They just added a third store. Um, I, I'm bullish on Planet 13. They're in a cannabis watch list. Um, you know, um, they're, they're up. They were down uh, uh, a little bit last week, but they're back up. They're trending. They were, they were, they were back on the upside. They're about $6 a share right now. Um, you know, they, they opened their big superstore in Santa Ana. It's going to take us some time to realize what that is, uh, what, what gains, what, how that translates for earnings and, and what that translates to investors right now. Um, you know, I, again, I'm still very, very bullish on them. I, I think I, I expect very good things for planet 13. Um, but not, you know, I, like I said, with every other cannabis stock, we're just not going to see a lot of big moves until, uh, either it's a big news item earnings, or we get federal legalization back on the table in a strong way. So, um, you know, I, again, I, I, I don't much going past that. I, I, I really don't know, um, you know, what else, um, you know, they, 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 they got a great, they've got great product placement in Santa Ana. They, they partnered with some, with Tinley beverages, with Moxie, with, um, several other, uh, good solid California brands, uh, to sell in their superstores. So they're not just relying on their own product. They're branching out and allowing other, other cannabis companies within California, which I think is smart. I, I think that's genius to do that. Um, you know, it, it makes it very homegrown, very localized. Um, its location is fantastic. Um, it's not going to receive the foot traffic of Las Vegas just yet, but I, I think it has the potential to, to do so. Um, let's see. I, I did want to touch a little bit because I get a lot of questions about High Tide. High Tide is also on our cannabis watch list, um, and it has not performed nearly as well as we like. It's down. Uh, I had to change the entry price a little bit because I was I was off a little bit on its entry price. Um, but it's still down. Uh, and, and I will say this, um, 
you know, it, it it's trading between its 50 day and 200 day moving average, which has kind of created a bit of a, uh, of a, of a, a, a top line, a bottom line. And it's still kind of bouncing between those, uh, those two lines. And, and I, and I kind of suggested it was going to do that for a while. Um, so really until it changes, uh, maybe dips below the 200 day moving average, then, uh, you know, I might be, uh, more apt to say, okay, if you're selling it, it might be time to part ways with it. However, one thing to take note here, <clears throat> excuse me, with high tide, they, they, they bought recently, they've been on an acquisition spree a bit, um, by buying, uh, uh, a lot of e-commerce sites. They, in fact, for their last five, uh, uh, purchases, they, they now own, I think four of the top five cannabis e-commerce sites. Um, and I think that's strong. <clears throat> I think that's good business acumen for high tide because it, you know, it, it gets them in, uh, to a market that I think is just going to gain steam, uh, here in the U S and that is e-commerce. Uh, it, it's, uh, you know, we saw with COVID, uh, 19, the, the propensity of people to, you know, drive up or have, have their cannabis delivered. And I think that sparks something with a lot of cannabis companies like, okay, well maybe we're onto something here with e-commerce. And I think they're right. Um, I think e-commerce is, is going to be very strong with, with cannabis, especially once we see federal legalization. Um, you know, then I think you're going to see e-commerce sites explode and high tide. What high tide is doing is they're positioning themselves to be kind of ahead of that curve when it happens. The problem is, is it's not happening nearly as fast as anyone likes. So, um, and that, that presents a bit of a problem. So, um, high tide is acquiring. They're not spending a bunch of money. They're doing a lot of stock swap. Um, you know, in, in terms of purchase, they're not dropping a lot of cash here. It's not, we're not talking about billions of dollars. Um, we're talking about a couple million and some stock option, uh, potential. So, uh, it does dilute the stock a bit when, when they do that. Um, so you have to expect a bit of a stock price drop. Really, there's nothing fundamentally wrong with high tide at this point. I don't, I don't see, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't see anything fundamentally wrong with high tide. Um, it's just the market hasn't been in their favor. And, and when you, when you're giving stock swaps out to purchase, uh, you know, you dilute the value of your stock. Uh, Nate, Nate said lightning round. I don't know if my voice can handle a lightning round. Um, Scott's miracle grow. Um, again, another stock that, um, uh, started off gangbusters for us. We put it on the watch list back in September. It's dropped a bit. Um, it dropped more than I like, but it's still showing a positive gain. I think we're back up to double digit gain on, on that right now. Again, nothing fundamentally wrong with it. It's got earnings coming out August 4th, I believe. Um, so I kind of like to wait and see what happens there. I don't really trade on earnings. Um, earnings provide good, you know, good news for day traders, but for, uh, longer term investors, not really your thing. Um, so, I, but I am curious to see, I think forecasts are for Scott's um, to be a little bit lower in its earnings per share, maybe around the 315 to 318 range where they're typically in the 340 range um, in terms of their earnings per share. Um, I think they beat that, but I don't know by how much. Um, let's see, uh, I innovative industrial properties. Um, and I already touched on high tide. Uh, you know, this is a great REIT. Um, I like it. I, it's, it's one I'm, I'm considering for, uh, our cannabis watch list. I'm, I'm looking at a couple things, uh, to add to the cannabis watch list. I'm trying to find the right entry point. Um, again, uh, you know, buying the dip is great when you know when the dip is. So, um, but in, uh, you know, IIPR is definitely on the list. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a REIT, a real estate investment trust that focuses on cannabis related property. Um, so it's not really a cannabis play, but it is a cannabis play. Uh, and it's a REIT that it provides, uh, a dividend because, uh, you know, REITs are required by law to pay out 90% of their profits to, to shareholders. So, uh, it definitely does have, uh, uh, you know, a great added benefit there. So yeah, I, you know, IIPR is one to look at, I think. And it's one I'm definitely keeping an eye on. Um, Carl asks, do you think, uh, next green wave gets to a dollar before the end of the year? Next green wave. I gotta look at that one. Um, let's see. Next green wave holdings, uh, it's an OTC stock. It's at sixty-five cents. The short answer to your to your question, Carl, is no. I I don't. Um, not unless something uh, massive happens to push the stock higher. It's at sixty-eight, sixty-five cents a share. It did see a nice bump today um, for a reason that I really don't know um, because they've already uh, released their they released their Q one earnings already on back in June. Uh, they are commencing construction um, on, uh, on, I believe, a new growth facility. <clears throat> so it did pop 13% today, went up about $0.08. Cents. Do I see it going up a dollar by the end of the year? Not right now. No. Um, again, I, I don't have a crystal ball. So it, it's hard for me to say, you know, yes, it will or no, it won't. Because, of course, it, it can. Of course, anything can. Anything can make that kind of a jump. 
Um, will it fundamentally right now? I don't see it, but that doesn't mean that it won't. So, you know, I think, um, I'm not sure what has prompted the move, the 13% jump in a day. I, I don't see anything headline wise that, that suggests why it would have moved up that quickly like that. But, uh, again, when you're talking about a stock that's under a dollar, a 13% move, you kind of have to put it in perspective, you know, the lower the number, the higher percentage move is, um, you know, just because that's how math works. Um, let's see, Jake asks, can you talk a bit about your new marijuana index? Um, I can, sure. Absolutely. This is something that I rolled out a couple of weeks ago. What I wanted to do was just kind of give, uh, people who, who, who look, who, who watch the marijuana market update on a weekly basis, uh, just kind of a, an additional tool to look at, uh, for the broader cannabis, uh, industry. Um, because right now there's really not a lot of, um, you know, there's not a lot of tracking done with that. So what I did is, um, in order to develop it, I want to make sure that I had kind of an accurate representation of the entire market. And um, <clears throat> one of the ways I did that was I wanted to get companies that list cannabis in their business description because there is no cannabis sector in, in the, uh, on the market. If you look at anything on Wall Street, there is no cannabis sector. So you have to be a little bit creative when you try to find cannabis stocks. So I, I, I did that and, I, and that wielded a nice list. I want to make sure they were listed on either major U.S. exchanges, be it NASDAQ, the, the New York Stock Exchange, the Russell, you know, whatever, um, and or over the counter. And they had a market cap of at least $10 million. Um, just kind of will, it, it, you know, anything under $10 million treads very thinly and doesn't necessarily provide an accurate rep representation of, of, the, of the broader market. So um, I compile that list, I run it, and I get a list of companies that meet that, meet that benchmark. And it changes from week to week. Uh, I think I started with 238. And, uh, last time I ran it, it was 231. And then I plot that and I create a, 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 an index. And basically this, and it's an equal weighted index so that not larger companies like Tilray or, or Canopy Growth or, or things like that don't overshadow a company like Next Green Wave. Um, everything is equal um, as it were. So, um, and, and it shows kind of the broader movement of the cannabis market. I'm going to do that every week uh, and present that during our marijuana market update. So definitely hope you stay, you, you tune in for that and, and find out more uh, about how the broader market moves. And uh, hi all from Israel. Um, that, that, thanks for joining, man. We're going, we're going global. Hope the boss man is paying attention. So, um, and, and hello from South Florida, um, from, uh, from Israel, uh, Tel Aviv. All right. Perfect. Very nice. I have not been, but I would love to go. Uh, I, I, I think it's a, an interesting country to visit. So, um, thank you for joining, uh, all the way from Israel. I definitely appreciate that. Um, especially considering how it's in the evening, uh, it's late in, in Tel Aviv right now. So definitely appreciate you, uh, uh, you jumping on. Um, it seems like the sector is still setting up, uh, property and REITs are up, but the companies producing are not reflecting the growth yet. Carrie, I think you're dead on. I think, I think that's a great, that's a great analysis. I think you're right. I think, you know, the, the, I don't think we've seen the full potential of the cannabis market, even back in February, where we had a massive jump in, in cannabis stocks. Um, you know, I, I don't think that was the full potential of the cannabis market. So I agree. And property and REITs are good. Um, you know, ETFs are going to reflect the broader market. So REITs are, uh, re REITs are a good, uh, a good potential investment tool, which is why I'm looking at one or two right now, uh, to, to invest in. Uh, or at least to recommend for the, for the, uh, cannabis watch list. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I think there's still a lot on the horizon that can happen, uh, that can fuel even more growth. I, I think what we saw in, uh, even the, the small pop after the November elections, uh, the, the big jump we saw in February across the entire cannabis industry, I think that's going to pale in comparison to what we can see, uh, once, uh, legalization becomes reality. Um, again, that's going to be the holdup. I, you know, that's just the bottom line. We're, we, stocks are going to go up, stocks are going to go down, but we're not going to see full potential until that happens. So right now, cannabis companies are trying to position themselves for that to happen. And they're also trying to juggle, okay, where can I find growth elsewhere because things are stalling in the United States. So they're looking at Europe. They're looking at, uh, Asia, Southeast Asia. They're looking at any other market that has the potential to grow. Um, as, 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 a, as another outlet to, to market their products. Um, I've got maybe one more stock I'm going to get to here. And let's see, uh, V asks, uh, F S L Y. Um, Sheppy, I, I saw you asked about, about Cloverleaf. Um, I think I actually might've talked about Cloverleaf in a, in a previous video, but I'm not really sure. Um, but fastly, um, fastly, 
This is a customer appreciation group. This is a cloud platform. Um, probably not one that I would look at for uh, cannabis at all, um, just because this is more of a tech company. Um, so maybe one I might look at in uh, the Bull and the Bear podcast, perhaps. So V, I might, I might look at it that way. Um, but it does give me a little bit of time. I can look at uh, uh, Cloverleaf, 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 uh, Cloverleaf holding. I'm sorry, Sheppy, you're right. It is Cloverleaf. Um, I thought it was Cloverleaf. Um, all right. So right now, um, as of today, it is trading about 960 a share. It had a 6% bump up today. Fundamentally, let's see, CLVR. Let's see, what does it look like fundamentally? Not bad. Um, its financials don't go out very far. Um, looking at some moderate growth from uh, 2020 to 2021, about 12 million to 18 million in revenue. Um, but 2020, they're projecting an 80% bump in revenue. Um, you know, the earnings are negative in a big way, but then again, that's all cannabis. Uh, net income is a concern here, Sheppy, uh, because as I see, even with uh, a, a bump in revenue, if you look at, you know, December of 2020, uh, rev total revenue of 12.1 million, projected revenue in 2021 of 18.6 million. Net income for 2021 is a negative $41 million. That is a, a pretty substantial loss. And it's a, mar a margin, a minus 224% margin. Fundamentally, that's that's kind of hard to get behind. I'm not really sure why that is, because I, I haven't, that's, I'm just looking at it kind of bare bones. Um, but that is, um, that's that's a pretty strong loss in net income. That means their money is going somewhere. And I don't know if it's going to marketing, if it's going to, uh, crop production. If it's going, I, I don't really know what that means without doing a little more research. Sheppy, I don't, I don't really know. Um, but just looking at, at on the surface, I mean, cannabis companies are, are by and large are in the, in the negative when it comes to net income, that's not a surprise, but to see uh, $18.6 million in total revenue with a $41.75 million net income loss, that is, that is brutal. That is, that is something that as, as someone who looks both fundamentally and technically that in and of itself is a red flag for me. So, <clears throat> all right, one more, and then I'm going to probably have to uh, cut it off again. Thank you for everyone who's, who, who's joined here. Our, our next one is going to be for members. Um, so make sure that you do uh, hit the join button on the bottom of uh, YouTube uh, to find out more about joining our, our, uh, our membership community. Um, and uh, would love it if you, if you did, thanks so much for, for doing that. Uh, if you already are, uh, if you're not definitely invite you, um, and plus we're, we're going to continue doing the marijuana market update each and every week. So we look forward to that. Uh, let's see. I love the name. Uh, I, I think this is in either Korean or Chinese. Uh, and then next to it is super foreigner. Um, that's a pretty bold statement. Super foreigner. That's a very bold statement statement to suggest you are a super foreigner, but I'll take it, man. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. Um, what are your thoughts on TCNNF? Um, this is one I know I've covered before. Um, in, in true leave. Um, Obviously, True Leaf is a big player. Um, it, it's a it's a it's a big player in the in the cannabis industry. Um, you know, I, I think uh, you know there's there's a lot of potential here. Um, they've been relatively quiet uh, of late. I think they're you know just kind of you know calming down. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I think it's got potential. I, I I think there's I think there's some potential here with True Leaf. Again, it's a big company though, so. You know, I, I'll tell you in, in working with, with Adam O'Dell, our chief investment strategist, I, I will, I will tell you that I do fully subscribe to looking at companies that are smaller in size because they do tend to produce much larger gains, um, both percentage wise, uh, and, and just in general, um, smaller companies do move farther and faster than larger companies. I mean, if you look at Apple or Amazon or company like that, they move up, but they do, they move up very, in very small increments. Um, companies like, uh, uh, you know, for example, clover leaves, as I was just pointing out for Sheppy, I mean, that's uh, a 6% gain in one day. You know, I, I don't know that Apple or Amazon has done that since their inception. So while I think true leave, you know, again, has a lot of potential, uh, it just kind of depends on what your, um, what, what your thoughts are in terms of what you're buying, what your strategy is. And I, I mean, I can't give you any personal advice, so I, I don't, uh, I don't really know what else to tell you. I can just kind of tell you what my thought is. It's got potential. 
Um, but I think you're going to find bigger gains with companies that are cheaper and, and, and smaller in scope. So I hope that that helps you super foreigner. And again, love the name. Um, you have to tell me what, what, in, what in front actually translates to in, in English. Cause I, I don't know what that means. Um, okay. Um, one more and then I'm done. And then I, I got to cut it cause I'm starting to lose. In fact, I'm going to take a drink cause I'm starting to lose my voice. Um, which will make my neighbors very happy. Um, what are good business opportunities in the industry that don't require high capital? Um, <laughs> um, Sean's a great question. Um, I, I don't, I'm not really an expert in, in that realm uh, in terms of, of looking at a, uh, at a business opportunity. And honestly, within the cannabis industry, um, there's nothing that doesn't require a fair amount of capital. Whether you want to open a dispensary, be a grower, uh, it doesn't matter. Um, there's still going to be costs involved. Um, that's licensing, marketing, um, you know, general administrative costs. It's one of the big things that, that is the eating up, you know, cannabis company profits right now is because there is a lot of expense. It's why cannabis companies aren't turning profits in a major way because there's a ton of expense out there, um, in whatever they do. So it's not just growers, it's dispensary companies. It's everywhere. So what are good business opportunities in the industry that don't require high capital? Um, investing, that, that would be a good business opportunity, I guess. Maybe, you know, investing in some cannabis companies rather than trying to start one. Um, that might be a, a good way of, uh, of doing it. So I'm going to cut it off. We, we kind of went over our 30 minutes, but that is okay. I, I appreciate um, everyone getting on board and and uh, and jumping in. Again, we have the, we, the uh, weekly marijuana market update that we have on YouTube. We've got our... Uh, membership program, which has even more insight. Uh, I try to provide blog posts and, and different videos and, and all sorts of stuff on there, plus insight into our cannabis watch list. Uh, you can get all that by clicking the join button and find out what, to, yeah, there's different tiers out there. Uh, you can find out what's available to whom. Uh, those are my dogs, by the way. Um, someone didn't put them away like they were supposed to, so we'll, we'll let that slide. Um, and, and, uh, uh, and, and we have other stuff on YouTube as well. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention our Ask Adam Anything video series. I get to sit down with Adam Odell and ask him any question that you like. Uh, investing with Charles, I've just started getting on board with that and, and working with Charles Sizemore on, uh, on his videos, uh, The Bull and the Bear, which comes out every week. Uh, again, if you have any questions or, or anything you'd like me to look at or whatever, e email me, feedback at moneyandmarkets.com. It's all spelled out, money and markets. There's no ampersand, it's and markets. So feedback at moneyandmarkets.com. Uh, and I'm more than, I would love to, uh, 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 to answer any questions. And yes, Kristen, uh, the dogs will make, probably make an appearance in every video that I do that they're not put away in because that's just how they are. They are, uh, glamour hounds. Uh, they, they, they love the spotlight. And if I could put one of them on my lap, they would love that too. So, um, I, that would be no problem because they're, they're just kind of media, uh, media types. They just like, like attention. So, but again, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, we're going to do it again uh, next month at minimum. I don't know if we're going to talk about doing it again even before then, but I really enjoyed this. Loved your questions. Loved the feedback. Loved the input. Uh, let's keep it going. And uh, uh, I'm Matt Clark, research analyst of Money Markets, uh, host of the weekly marijuana market update. Uh, wishing everyone safe trading. Uh, thanks, guys. Appreciate it.